Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Oscar-winning writer and director Emerald Fennell, whose new film is The Excellent Saltburn, truly one of my favorite movies of the whole year. So uh, congratulations on this film. It is just great. Uh, I guess I wanted to start coming up. You had so much success with Promising a Woman, obviously. We just mentioned Oscar winner for your screenplay, director nomination, best picture nomination, all this great stuff. Saltburn to me, though, I felt like, and I, I love Promising a Woman, it feels like a level up in terms of the visual storytelling and like all the different things you're doing, particularly just the decision to shoot in four by three aspect ratio, I thought was really cool. And I guess like, just to start, like, why did you decide that visually would be the right way to tell this story? Yeah. I mean, thank you so much. Well, like every decision that you make on a movie, it's, it's, it's just like, what is going to be the best thing for this specific thing? And so me and Linus early on when we went to the first recce of the house, one of the things we felt was so apparent was that the the house itself is so square. You know, it's it's kind of, it's tall and, and every kind of, every ceiling is as detailed as, you know, as, as the, the walls. And it felt like that we really needed to reflect that, but also all of the references that I had visually for this, you know, and that we shared were, they were paintings and they were portraits. They weren't landscape, they were Caravaggio and they were Joshua Reynolds and Gainsborough, these kind of old British portraits. And so it, it bit by bit, you know, we shot in a, in a few different formats, just, just photographed it. And it just, it, it just felt like the best thing that kind of containment really, really worked. And, and the ability to be formal, to be more, to, to make something more painterly, more expressive. It's it's much easier to do a kind of formal composition in 133 than it is, you know, anamorphic, for example. I mean, uh, it, anamorphic is, is so wonderful. And it's, you know, it's how we shot Promising a Woman because that, because of, because of that movie, because it was, we made it, you know, on a budget and in a on, in a short period of time, it was all about the exact same thing. It was giving it scale, giving it this kind of sense that you were kind of watching a kind of movie. And with this, it sort of felt like the opposite, actually. It felt like we wanted to, it wanted to feel like a peep show. You know, I love super, super close-ups and 133 is dynamite for the super close-up because you just get the full face. You're not cutting everything off. And then once we settled on it, we just realized, it was it was the best decision we could have made because everything with the proscenium arches, the maze, everything is kind of square. And then you have Archie and, and Jacob who are both six foot five. So just from a practical point of view, it really helps you when you're shooting. You know, you don't want to be cutting people's heads off. So, you know, but it's a really it's a really interesting one because after we made the decision, we sort of took it for granted. Um, it, it, it just because I think one three three has fallen out of fashion, but that's not you know there aren't that many aspect ratios to choose from really, right. um, and it's 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 so much it's interesting like all kind of storytelling modes and and kind of visuals, there are there are just kind of things that we become used to or there are kind of trends, and and I think that one three three maybe it's slightly fallen out of fashion, but I love it you know and the next one I've no idea what it will be in yet, but uh, I mean it's it's hard to beat. As in terms of intimacy, it's and and you know, yeah, the ability to kind of be speak in visual metaphors, it's um, yeah, yeah. unbeatable. Really. It's just great. I mean, I love that. I love what you said. I, I mean, I love all the performances in this are great. Did that? Do you think like you mentioned like the close ups? I'm thinking like there's so many memorable close ups in this that I'm just like I'm like I love. There's a scene when uh later in the later in the film when uh Oliver and Felix go to Oliver's family. And you have a great close-up of uh, Jacob and he's like, take a fucking pill, or I think is the line. I, I like, it's burned in my brain. It's such a great line read. And I was like, all of these close-ups, does, like, I guess, does the aspect ratio, did that, like, did you expect the performances to be that, like, great? I don't know what the, like, like, does that help inform the performances at all? Or like, were you like pleasantly surprised at how great they were when you get to do those kind of close-ups and get those great responses, I guess? Man, I think, do you know what, again, it's, it's sort of, it's all, it's all part of the same thing. It's everything feeds on everything else. And that's what's so joyful about a movie is that, you know, is it, it the answer is yes to all of the above. Certainly early on when I, when I first put Linus, 
you know, one of the greatest days of my life um, when I first met Linus. It, one of the things that I was really kind of keen to, to talk about was sweat and armpit hair and pores and taste buds. And, you know, if you're making a film about beauty and the, and the fetish, fetishization of beauty and what we will do for beauty and what we will do to get inside it, you need to be inside it. You need to feel there's something so illicit and beautiful and intimate about stubble rash. So you need to be close, you know, and in that kind of, you know, being in someone's armpit. Like these are things that are not, they're not really possible that, you know, you can't have, but you can't, you have right. to have the, you have to have the sticky humanness. You have to have the, the thing of the mess of being human if you're also going to have the perfect formal restrained beauty. And so um, that was a huge thing early on that we discussed. And then of course, when you, you're working with actors as good, as like profoundly talented as these actors, you know, you want to you want to be close but it's it's an emotional it's an emotional choice like everything every every lens you choose and every camera move is to do, is an emotional choice of course it's to do with beauty but you know it's you know the thing of for example the bath scene with venetia and oliver where she calls him a moth we're so close there we're so devastatingly close and what i love so much about it is not just allison's like unbelievable performance perfect beautiful devastating performance but but it's where Barry as well as an actor you know one of my favorite things about him is that the scrutiny of the close-up is where he is most intriguing mm -hmm. because he you know he has that thing that I, I desperately wanted Oliver to have which was the closer we try and get the further away he is like that kind of the thing that we need, the need that we have all of us, which is to be told why, is to have some explanation, is to kind of be able to categorize somebody sort of almost psychologically. You can't do that with Oliver and you can't do it with Barry either because you get so close and you just, you can read so much. And so, you know, it, it's all of it is that, it's the combination always of, of what works, what works best, what makes us feel the most and and what is the most powerful. Yeah, I love that about, when thinking about what you were just saying there about like Barry and close up, I, my, I love, I felt, I feel like the scene, a lot of people, there's a lot of like hot button scenes in this film, obviously that you have gone viral. And I saw like, there's like 4 million, tick, it's billions of TikTok out, all these different things. So obviously this film has struck a chord, but the scene I think a lot of people are, have discussed is like um, Oliver at, at the, with the fresh grave, right? Let's say we could, for spoiler purposes, but whatever. And I love that you're yeah. shooting far away. And I guess my take, I feel like that is maybe one of the few times in the film, uh, you or the filmmakers, you can tell me this is completely wrong, but we're actually like, he's actually showing some true emo like he's showing like true emotion there in a way that we haven't actually seen before right from him and that's like or do you think that or not really well that's really interesting i think gosh well you know what i think he is he's all emotion right he's all emotion oliver he's driven entirely by you know if if we're talking about a world of artifice a world that is constructed over a thousand years of perfect beauty not just family but the place Oliver is the human inside of that. Oliver is the, the thing that we all are, I think. He is the, he is the, like, nature. He is, he, he, he just, he's motivated entirely by this, like, voracious, voracious wanting and needing. And it's, and it's, you know, very, like, emotional, I think. You know, he's, He's, I mean, everything he does is driven by this, this need, this love, this kind of cannibal love and this desire. So I've, I've never felt that, you know, just because somebody, maybe somebody's motivations, very specific, like psychological motivations might be elusive to us and even to themselves, that doesn't mean that they're incapable of feeling. I think he's so capable of feeling like so much. And so the thing for me about the grave and 
you know, why I love it so much is again, I, I, it's a really important thing for me to not like, to not make any judgment. And, you know, when you're a filmmaker, every cut, every bit of coverage, every close up, you're telling people what you think. The thing about that scene for me is that it's not about what I think. Not this film isn't about the right. characters even, it's about the audience. And it needed to be far away and it needed to be as long as it was because it just, you know, like Oliver, it just is. It is, a, it is you know, mortifying and devastating and sexy and cringe-making and a really kind of honest act of grief and regret and all of those things and it's also kind of an attempt to get at to get something back you know and I and so I think for me it just leave just the restraint this is not a this is not a restrained film I have no interest in subtlety or restraint this is you know this film is taken from the most restrained British you know the most restrained British genre we're talking about kind of you know the go-between and 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 Evelyn War and Downton Abbey, the kind of the, the facade of Britishness. And everything it was about kind of unrestraining, taking the restraints off that and letting it kind of fall apart naturally. But there are moments where you need to be restrained. And that is one of those moments. And it and it's it's also down to Barry's like unbelievable performance. He's so because good. he's so good. And and like and it's so moving. And what was so interesting about that scene in particular is that, you know, it's there's something so magical that happens when you're working with people that you really connect with, that you all really believe in each other and you hold each other and you are very, you know, we're obs we are all of us so preoccupied with looking after each other. And so, and and for me, consent is such a big thing. If you're talking, if you're talking about love and desire. And there, there are going to be scenes which are, you know, that, that are that are nude or that are, you know, have, are intimate. Consent and trust is like the main thing. And so it was always important for me that that even, you know, if, if Barry changed his mind afterwards, even in, even way after, it would have been cut, it would have immediately been cut. If anyone changes their mind, if anyone feels too exposed, like they did something they felt, you know, I'll always argue my case, but I will never ever. So that's the thing that you get is that there is no trickery. There's no coercion. There's no force. It's that what are we going to do that feels honest? What are we going to do that feels what it feels to be human, which is a bit flawed and embarrassing and complicated and gross and terrible. You know, that's what the Gothic is. And so, you know, it was, it was, it was quite enig not enigmatic, you know, in the script, it didn't really go into any detail. And it was really more about the moment of love and grief and loss. And, you know, when we were there, I said to Barry, <laughs> I think Oliver would unzip. And he just said, close down the set. So, you know, we put the rain on and the camera was where it was, and there were no microphones, just one hidden mic in the grave. And that's all, you know, that's the shot that we have. That's what we have of it. And, you know, it was just me, because obviously it was closed set. So it was just me and Linus, and Josie, the amazing producer, and Sam, the wonderful script supervisor. And, you know, we were in a tent hidden away, so he was completely alone. And, you know, it's just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's the most extraordinary bit of acting. It's the most gothic. It's everything. It's everything. It's the most beautiful thing. And so I will fight for it always. And I and I and I just thank God for Barry as well, who who understands that thing. And and that's what's so wonderful about making this film is that for the people who connect to it, who get it, it's like. They feel how I feel about it, how Barry feels about it, which is that like they're gonna go <laughs> into the grave too. We're all gonna go together. We're all just gonna fucking jump off the cliff together. And, and that's just the thrill of it. 
is if yeah. it makes, and that's what it ever is, is if it makes me feel something, if it makes leanness, if it makes all of us, if, you know, if we all watch something and go, fuck, in the room, you know, all of us, then that's all you can do. It's not going to work for everyone. Right. But, you know. Not all stuff should be, right? Maybe. I, that's, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the thing, right? Like, you're- no, and it's, you know, it's so freeing as well to, 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 to not have to worry about that. You know, I think we're very, we're still, there are still so many kind of, kind of very constraining criteria for what makes something kind of quote unquote good. Um, and I, and I'm, and so it's very freeing to kind of say, let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about subtlety. Let's not worry about the kind of beat by beat, you know, save the cat stuff. Let's not worry about that. Let's worry about what makes us feel something. What makes us want to talk, what makes us argue with each other and 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 what and that's the joy of filmmaking. I mean, you know, and so I'm just so grateful, so grateful that I got to make this film and that so many people, you know, just love it so much. It's just a joy. Yeah. It's great. I mean, I've seen it many times. I've now seen it like three times. So like I'm way yeah, in on this, this film. It's great. Uh, you have a great, uh, we have to wrap up here in a minute, I'm sure. But we have, I love the way you use music, obviously, Promising a Woman, uh, just incredible. This, when I, I was loving it, I love the way that the score, I love the An- Anthony score, I think is amazing too. And then when you drop the uh, Block Party uh, song, uh, this, this Modern Love, I was like, this is the greatest. I was just like way in on this. So I guess like when you're picking music, how are you, are you focused on making like, you're obviously like in that same, in the right era, right? For this film. Are you very beholden to like when things are released? Are you like, don't care as much if the vibe is right? Like, how do you kind of approach it? Well, it just depends. It just depends what the thing is. So, you know, you want to be, you need to be, so the set, the film is set, the beginning is is obviously, um, you know, the, the first moment Oliver arrives is, is 2006, but then for the most part, the film's 2007. So we so we did try to be pretty strict. We were pretty strict about that stuff. I mean, you know, like there are lots of people on the internet who absolutely adore just to remind us that, you know, Superbad came out in the summer of 2007 and it couldn't have been on DVD. And to them, I say, have you ever bought a burned, a fake burned pirated DVD? Because I did in those yeah. days. Sorry, sorry to the to the people to the sorry to the film industry. But you know, there there, there are always things, and so there are there are a couple of like you know we stretch. You right. know, you have to be able to stretch things a little bit. Yeah. But in general, you want to you you know we we I think everything in there is is two thousand seven. You know, maybe give or take a few months. Um, but really, for me, I'm very strict about music because. Uh, I know how, well, I know how I respond to it. I'm always looking to be, I'm so, I'm looking to be seduced, you know, by food, by people, by cinema, by music. I feel, I feel a lot of stuff all the time. And, you know, Britney Spears makes me feel that as much as like, you know, Handel. So it's kind of always for me about where's the emotion? Where's the thing that gives you that feeling again? And so for the first five assemblies of any of any film, I don't have any music, no temp score, no nothing, because I want to make sure that it's a cheat. Because, you know, you put block parties, this modern love over your film, you better believe it's going to be the best film of all time because it's the best song of all time, you know, and it's the same as Have a Cheeky Christmas. But, you know, it's always about what is the thing that's going to, well, Murder on the Dance Floor is such a great example, you know, that's now like topping the charts. Like what a like what a crazy, it's just so crazy. It's also crazy. But the thing is, is about that is that it, you know, it needed that moment needed everything that the film is, which is that it's camp and it's funny and it's deadpan and it's and it's glorious and it's a fucking bop. And it and you can't help but tap your foot. And the thing is, is if your body can't resist, you're complicit. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, Oliver's our hero. And no matter what he does, the moment that song comes on and the moment you see Barry's unbelievably beautiful dance, we're on the side of the devil. Well, you know, whether he's the devil or not is, you know, I would, I would argue anyway, but we're on his side. 
And that's what music can do. It can just like, it beckons you in. And, you know, Anthony's score is just magnificent. And, you know, it, just the kind of cleverness of, of it all. I really wanted it to feel like, um, yeah, I got, I got in trouble for saying this at a Q&A recently because it, because it's sort of like rude, but I'm really tired and <laughs> so I don't care. I said to Anthony, like, I want it to feel like Brexit Britain is coming all over your face. <laughs> you know, the big houses, the chocolate box, the royal family, the, 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 you know, the stuff that we've exported, all of this British, British, Britishness. So that's why it starts, you know, it starts with the coronation theme. It starts with Zadok the priest and it's Oliver's coronation. That's what we've, you know, it's, it's, it's all of that stuff. And so Anthony built a school that was, First and foremost, the most important thing was that it was unbelievably romantic. We understood that this is a Gothic romance, but that it takes its cue from British music. It takes its cue from hymns. There's a lot of organ, <laughs> which obviously was very fun in terms of double entendres for the entire composition period. <laughs> like, you know, there's there's it's it's designed to do what the film does, which is take something we're familiar with and make it unfamiliar and 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 kind of make it sort of sexy and transgressive, take something formal and kind of take it apart. Yeah. Uh, we have to wrap here. With, uh, just love hearing you talk about this film. It is a great movie, Saul Byrne. You can watch it now on Amazon or see it in the theater. At Arnold Fennell, thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your support. 